What is going on ladies and gents, Michael or Legacy Kill HD back here today with another top upcoming game video for you and today we're going to be discussing single player games of 2017. These are some of the most terrific single player experiences coming out next year. Make sure to check out some of the other videos within the series. We've discussed open world games, PS4 exclusives, and much more. Check the playlist out. Nonetheless guys, let's start here at the number 10 spot with Call of Cthulhu. It's a horror video game being developed by Cyanide Games. It's based on a short story by the American writer H.P. Lovecraft. The RPG investigation game was Cyanide psychological horror and stealth elements takes the players with finding the truth behind the death of an acclaimed artist and her family. Players will discover more than they bargained for when the great dreamer Cthulhu prepares its awakening. This game so far looks pretty mysterious, it looks really creepy, I think there was a game made years before this, I love where it's coming from, the story is really intriguing, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what Cyanide Games has in store with The Call of Cthulhu. At the 9th spot we have We Happy Few, it's an indie survival video game being developed and published by Compulsion Games. The game takes place in the fictional English city of Wellington Wells, a dystopian fashion society formed following an alternate timeline of events within World War II, which is now on the verge of collapse in the mid-1960s. The residents of the city, seeking to forget an unspeakable horror they committed, began taking a drug called Joy that makes them happy but also leaves them easily controlled and lacking morality and understanding of the long-term consequences of their actions. Players will control one of three characters in the full release who become dubbed as Downers after choosing to stop using Joy and must try to survive long enough to complete something important and personal themselves, all while trying to escape the city before the impending social collapse happens. This will be played from a first person perspective. The game combines RPG, survival, and light roguelike elements, with the developers focusing on creating a story with a strong narrative. We got our first taste of this here in 2016 with an early access, but they're saying that they're going to be adding the story and a lot more elements in 2017. That's when the full release will be coming. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the narrative will be like because this concept is just phenomenal. I love the idea and I love the type of game it is. It kind of like feels like a Fallout, Bioshock game, and then there's all kinds of literature that come together. They say they drew inspiration from a lot of different types of things so definitely this has to be on everybody's mind it's an indie game but it is an intriguing indie game that you really should give a try in 2017 when it does fully release at the eighth spot we have horizon zero dawn it's an action role-playing video game being developed by guerrilla games the plot revolves around aloy a hunter and archer who lives in a world overrun by robots having been closed her whole life she sets out to discover the dangers that kept her sheltered for so long aloy makes use of ranged and melee weapons and stealth tactics to combat with the mechanized creatures whose remains can also be looted for resources Sources. The game features an open world environment for Aloy to explore. Side quests will be divided into tribes, while the main story guides her throughout the whole world. And I really am intrigued to see where this game takes us. It's a weird concept, I've discussed this a lot in the past. It's just something that you would never expect, and I really think it's cool that Guerrilla Games is taking something different. They're, you know, they're known for the Killzone games. And I really am happy that they're taking a different type of step. We've seen a lot of the gameplay. It looks beautiful, but I'm really wondering what this story will take Aloy to. Maybe she'll find out the answers of what exactly happened to humanity and why these mechanized creatures rule the earth. At the seven spot we have Days Gone. It's an open world action adventure survival horror video game in development by SIE Ben Studio. It will be played from a third person perspective where we will be controlling Deacon St. John, a drifter and former bounty hunter who prefers to live a dangerous life on the road over living in wilderness encampments. The game takes place two years after a global pandemic occurred which killed almost all of humanity but transformed millions of others into freakers, mindless zombie-like creatures that are quickly evolving. Players are allowed to use multiple ways to complete objectives such as utilizing stealth for silent takedowns or taking the aggressive approach by using long and short range weapons. Players are also able to craft new items to improve combat efficiency. And so far what we've seen in Days Gone was a really awesome E3 presentation. It was a big surprise, not a lot of people expected this, and it's a really cool zombie game. You know, a lot of people have been bashing on the zombie industry just because there's so many zombie games out there, so much to zombie entertainment in general, and I've even discussed it a lot, but I love the survival aspect of this. It looks really fun, and I really am intrigued to see what Deacon St. John's story will be like and seeing what it actually ends up being because I've talked about this before. I said it looks like Sons of Anarchy type of thing, which will be pretty cool if they actually make it that way. But it also kind of grabs aspects from a lot of other zombie games that makes it a lot of fun. So I really am intrigued and hopefully it'll have fun story with different types of things that we'll actually be able to do in this open world setting. At the sixth spot we have Detroit Become Human. It's a neo-noir thriller video game being developed by Quantic Dream. The plot revolves around several playable characters, all of whom are androids. Among them, Kara who escapes the factory she was made into explorer newfound sentience, and Connor whose job is to hunt down deviant androids like Kara. The characters may survive or perish depending on the choices that are made which serve to shape the story as customized by the player. There are multiple playable characters in the game who can die as the story continues without them. As a result, there is no game over message following a character's death. The story will branch out depending on which choices are made. The more information one collects within a certain amount of time, the greater the chance of success will be in deciding the course of action. And this game is coming from the Heavy Rain developers and there is a lot of choices in this. The game is set to only be between 8 and 10 hours, but the good thing is they're saying that there's a lot of replayability because there's so many different characters and so many different paths. And 
and so many choices that you're really going to have to think, I guess, fast in the first minutes of the game. So you'll actually be able to play through at the end and play a different type of style. And there's going to be all kinds of endings. And it's really sounding like you'll be able to create multiple different types of stories with these characters just because it's such a different type of video game that we haven't gotten in a while. So it's going to be really cool to see how this all works out. But it feels like you'll be playing different types of stories each time you actually go through it. And at the top five here at the five spot, we have Prey. It's a first person shooter video game being developed by Arcane Studios. The player takes the role of Morgan Yu, a human aboard a space station with numerous hostile aliens. The player will be able to select certain attributes of you, including gender and decision made by the player will affect elements of the game's story. To survive, the player controls you to collect and use weapons and resources aboard the station to fend off and defeat the aliens. Also stated that the aliens have an array of different powers that the player's character can gain over time. One such alien has the ability to mimic everyday items such as a chair. It's being called more of a psychological game rather than a horror one. Now I know there's a lot of haters out there just because of the fact that a lot of people like myself even wanted to see that Prey sequel, you know, the original Prey. And with this new reboot coming from Arcane Studios, there's going to be a lot of people questioning every move that they make, but I'm really hoping they deliver with a great story and gameplay experience. And hopefully a game that doesn't make us question why that original Prey sequel did not happen. At the fourth spot, we have God of War. It's a third person action adventure video game in development by Santa Monica Studio. The game will be a soft reboot for the franchise. It will take the series to the world of Norse mythology. Kratos will return as the main character and now he has a son. Kratos acts as a mentor and a protector to his son and has to master the rage that has driven him for many years. This new installment will be single player only. The game will feature elements similar to role playing games such as archery knowledge points as well as Spartan Rage timed ability during battle. This ability appears to be the new take on the rage ability of the previous installments. There will also be crafting resources for the players to find. This is one of the best delights of E3 2016. It looks absolutely phenomenal. I like that they're actually upgrading on the graphics and I also like the story direction. It's going to be interesting seeing Kratos and his son and the direction that they go with that and actually seeing what type of story will come with this and also seeing the Norse gods. That's pretty cool. I like that they're actually rejuvenating this franchise by also going down that road. So we'll actually be introduced to new monsters and new gods. And this has been one of my favorite franchises for PlayStation. So it's going to be a lot of fun to dive once again with God of War. And I really am happy about this game and what it looks like it's going to be. At the three spot, we have Spider-Man. It's an open world action adventure video game based on the Marvel comic superhero Spider-Man. It is being developed by Insomniac Games. The game will tell an entirely new story about Spider-Man and is not tied to any film or comic book. The game will cover both the Peter Parker and Spider-Man aspects of the character and will feature a more experienced Spider-Man, so hopefully that means that we don't get another Uncle Ben death. The game will also take place in an open world New York City. Players will be able to use Spider-Man's well-known abilities such as web slinging and wall crawling, as well as new gameplay elements unseen in previous Spider-Man games such as traversing using parkour. And guys, I gotta admit, I really am pumped for this. I've talked about this so much, but it really is one of those games that really caught my eye at E3. It was one of the best announcements. I think maybe if not the best announcement, it was just phenomenal. I mean, I've talked about this with a lot of you guys even in the comments of other videos, but this reminds me of Spider-Man 2. That was one of my favorite Spider-Man games of all time. Just a lot of hours and a lot of fun that I had with that. So this next one, we're getting a more experienced Spider-Man. So definitely, hopefully we don't get another Uncle Ben death. That was one of the worst things. I swear every single game, every single movie has to have that. But I feel like it's time to move on. Maybe we get an older Spidey, older Peter Parker that's smarter and maybe even a newly created villain. At the two spot, we have Mass Effect Andromeda. It's an action role playing third person shooter video game being developed by Bioware. It is the first game in the Mass Effect series to feature an open world. The game takes place long after the events of the first three Mass Effect games in the Andromeda Galaxy. A new protagonist, Ryder, is designated as a Pathfinder, an operative tasked with discovering a new planet for the human race to colonize. The game features various planets for players to explore with each having their own characteristics. Similar to its predecessors, the game features a dialogue tree, choices, romantic relationships with companions, and co-op multiplayer. Now this has to be one of the most hyped games for next year. Everybody's getting anticipated about this because it looks absolutely phenomenal. And I know all of us want to dive back into the Mass Effect universe, and this time with an open world to explore and all these new characters and alien races that we're actually going to be able to interact with and new enemies. I think it's actually amazing that they decided to give us something that's different, you know, a different type of game, but it's also restarting the Mass Effect series with new everything. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun to see what Bioware has in store for us with this game. At the number one spot, we have Red Dead Redemption 2 or Red Dead 3. It's an open world western action adventure third person shooter video game being developed by Rockstar Games. In 2015, an ex-Rockstar employee, Danny Ross, confirmed Red Dead Redemption 2 was the next game coming from Rockstar Games. In 2016, it was leaked with an in-game map that Red Dead Redemption 2 was on the way. Multiple sources, including Tech Radar, confirmed this leaked map to be legitimate. This leaked map actually contains information hinting to an Indian war that I discovered myself. You may want to check those videos out because they are crucial to the plot for the next Red Dead game. Months later, pre-alpha concept art was leaked showing the direction of the next Red Dead game. Take-Two stated we won't see any releases from Rockstar till at least April of 2017. What we know so far about the Red Dead Redemption 2 is it will be much bigger compared to its predecessor. It 
it will be a prequel and the ability to swim and explore the ocean will be featured. This game is shaping to be between the 1880s and the 1900s, which is a period that I'm really intrigued to see because there are some historical moments that we already know about in the Red Dead Redemption universe, such as the massacre of 1899 in Blackwater that included Landon Ricketts. And that's not to mention some of the other historical moments such as the Indian Wars that ensued during that period of time in the Spanish-American War of 1898. There's just a lot of history to cover in these games, and it's going to be really fun to see what Rockstar Games can make with this. And also, not to mention some of the other things I want to see from Red Dead Redemption, such as hunting, looting, dead-eye mini-games such as poker, duels, online multiplayer, and horse riding, and so much more. But the main focus is hopefully going to be on the narrative, because that's what made Red Dead Redemption such an amazing title. But I think we all can agree, we're just ready to dive back into this Western setting and get another Rockstar game. Anywho, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Make sure you tell me in the comment section what single player game you're looking forward to the most and why. Also check out some of the other videos within the series. And if you didn't already, make sure you smack that like button if you did enjoy the video or found any informative value. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys, and I'll see you later.